everybody, it's Shu here. We're gonna solo stealth framing frame on one down difficulty. Uh, framing frame is one of the most just pain in the ass stealth missions in the game. It's been since the start. Um, ever since they added it, it's just been one of the worst, and that hasn't changed. Uh, I'm gonna show you how to do it though. Um, you're fortunate that you don't have to do it on pro job anymore. There used to be a framing frame pro job where you had to do all three days without restarting any of the days, and that sucked. So first day is just art gallery, the solo mission, the same as that. Uh, we're placing cameras in the three bat galleries and we're placing a key card on the inside in the restroom so we can pick that up and find the security office. First thing we're doing is going up here to the front because we want to open the front doors and step inside uh, it's not going to be our usual route inside, but there's a few reasons we do this. One, it's usually how we get out, and two, by stepping inside, we prevent the, a scripted event that would happen if we started over on the side doors. If you haven't set foot inside the art gallery and you go and start with the side doors, a scripted event can happen where a guard opens that door as you're picking it, and you have to kill him, and it just makes things extra complicated and there's no reason to do that so we open ourselves an exit we set foot inside the building that's an important part that's what sets off the trigger and then we go over here to pick up the key card and when we get the key card we're going to go upstairs and we're going to look through the skylights to find where the security office is it's either always in gallery a c or e because it has to be facing toward the inside of the building so it can't be on the diagonal ones b and d and we saw it just looking through that light that it's in uh, this gallery right here. So we're going to take care of that first. We could use one of our um, ECMs to do it, but we don't really have another thing that's worth spending the asset on the key card for. So we might as well get the key card, use that to get in here, and then we have two ECMs to cover and escape if things get hairy. With this guy out of the picture, there won't be any cameras, and that'll make things a lot easier. And now we're looking to get paintings. Uh, it's handy to look through here both to find out where paintings are and also um, get an idea of where the lasers are. For example, I saw through that camera that the lasers were on one of the sides of uh, Gallery C. Wasn't really sure which, but we know that now. And the lasers prevent you from going through them without setting off an alarm. So they effectively cut the... Uh, the gallery into two pieces. You can't go from gallery E all the way through it and leave in gallery A. Okay, so there we see the where the split was. It's between B and C. So it's effectively split into gallery A and B as one section, and then gallery C, D, and E as a second section. We're going to try to get all the paintings. You don't have to. You only need four to move to the next day. But more paintings means more money, and it means more cameras on the last day of the heist, which makes it easier to find the stuff that you need to pick up. I'm just going to drop this here so I can fill up on body bags. And at some point we we're going to take out the guy in the center office. It's not mandatory. You can easily slip by him on the way in and out, and I used to frequently do that. But over time I found that he adds an unnecessary complication to things and the rare times that he does spot you, it's when you can ill afford it. So it makes sense to take him out when it's safe. Take him out when you get the chance, when you have him isolated, and now you have a much easier entry and escape through the front area if you need it. Now you might be wondering why we didn't take roof access, for example, or some of the other assets um, instead of the key card that we didn't necessarily need. Um, there's a few reasons. Roof access is nice if you're speed running, but otherwise it's duplicative of what the stairs on the right side of the building do. Uh, it's just a truck on the left side that you can climb to get to the roof. I can just spend a couple extra seconds and go to the other side of the building and do the same thing. So good for speed running, useless otherwise. Um, there is another asset for opening the windows at the top. Uh, you can already do that. I don't know. I don't know if it's 
just been broken the entire time or if the idea was that it's supposed to leave the windows open like entirely and you don't have to just go through the couple seconds of spinning the wheel but the windows can be opened up there you don't you don't need an asset for it it's a total waste and then there's um, an asset to place a drop down a like a great big set of boxes covered in a sheet that you can drop into drop on top of safely from the roof uh, that's going to be there no matter what, and the only difference is you don't know where it'll be if you don't buy the asset, and that's fine. Um, see, that's the that's what I'm talking about right there. You can drop through the window onto that for a safe fall. Um, so you can't control where it is, which is fine, and Gallery B also has a safe area to drop down on, so you really don't need to spend an asset on it. So I get the key card. Save the ECMs in case we need to cover an escape. You use the roof both to get sort of a feel of where the guards are um, and as a way to get in and also to you know scout for the paintings and see where there's uh, more of them and wow I saw a lot of them in gallery A so we're gonna be going in and out of there a lot so it ends up being nice that we took out the guy in the front office or the front lobby you can bypass him, but the more traffic you take through there, the better it gets to take him out. And overall, just the way you play this, kind of, there's a weird sort of contradiction that you have to figure out. Um, if you're trying to get all the paintings, you have an incentive to start with the hardest things first because you want to fail early. But you also want to sort of react to the flow of guards and pick from the side that has fewer guards and easier entrance and exit as the guards sort of shift like tides left and right. Um, so you sort of have to balance those two competing concerns. Pick your opportunities, but also go for the, go for the things that are deeper in if they are just as open as something closer in, because you may not get that opportunity again. We saw there were a bunch in Gallery A, so we're going to go eat that. We, have four now. The we could leave right now, but no, there's no need to. It's nice off. to get the rest of the paintings. Um, an important thing about this day Proceed is that guard. as long as you stay quiet the whole way through, day two is guaranteed to be quiet. Um, that includes, you know, if guards see you and are shooting at you, but say you escaped before the alarm went off, or you put down an ECM to prevent them from calling out and you're escaping under cover of that ECM. As, as long as the alarm hasn't gone off, it counts as escaping quietly, and escaping quietly guarantees that day two goes quiet, which is a big deal because you don't want to get ambushed by SWAT. If you go loud, the chance that you um, have a loud day two varies depending on difficulty. I'm going to assume that it is guaranteed on one down. I know that at bare minimum it's a very high chance. Uh, last time I remember any numbers it was something like 75% chance to go loud on Death Wish if you got out uh, during a loud escape. I don't know if they jiggered with those numbers at all, but it wouldn't at all surprise me if it was guaranteed to go loud. It's one more reason to do day one right get in quiet, get out quiet, and day two will treat you very nice. It's just hauling bags. Security guard. There's four more paintings to grab. Now three, and at least one of them is in gallery A. So after we grab that, we'll take back to the roofs and we'll do some recon again to see where the other two are, and we can figure that out. You notice that they're worth a lot more once you get past your initial complement of four. When I first started playing Payday 2, 
the first mission I tried, I was running solo, and I saw Art Gallery, which had been spun off of Framing Frame as a community heist. They just did day one of Framing Frame here as its own solo heist. And I looked at that and I said, oh, an art gallery. Well, that sounds way less intense than a bank robbery or something. That's probably a good way to start. And I didn't understand a thing about how Payday 2 worked. And I ended up falling through a skylight and breaking my legs. That was my introduction to Payday 2. Hopefully your introduction to the game has gone a little easier. Uh, hopefully I can make your introductions to one down a lot easier, especially the stealth. Still looking for the other two paintings. They have the sticker to the side of them that indicates that they're sold. Those are the ones that we're going for. sure not to alert the guards down there while we look. Oh yeah, nothing there. I think I remember there being one in here. Yeah. There we go. And so you can just drop right in on there on top of uh, that cross in Gallery B and land just fine. It'll bust your armor for a sec, but then you'll get out fine. It's either harder to do or impossible to do in the other galleries, depending on where you're falling. Um, obviously that big center thing that I told you about covered in a sheet, that's a safe fall. Now we just need one more and we can get out. And we've got two ECMs up in case we need to cover our escape that way. Hopefully it doesn't even come to that. I don't think I can make this fall. So we're gonna we're gonna make our entrance on the big thing in the center here. Just gotta wait for the guards to dissipate a little bit. Like I said, they sort of flow across the map like a tide, and you just sort of have to pick your openings and work around them. There's those lasers. If we uh, if we try to pass through those, they'll set off the alarm, and that's an automatic uh, loud, even if we uh, drop an ECM. So going through the lasers, not an option for us. Uh, in that bathroom, there's a little trick. We didn't use it here, but there's a hand dryer. Um, if you get under that, it will detect you and set off a noise, and that noise will draw a guard into the bathroom where you can safely kill them. Uh, like I said, we didn't need it, but it's a nice thing to know. Otherwise, the guard will walk right up to the doorway, but they won't come in. But yeah, hand dryer will change that, and they'll actually come in and you can shoot them. Now, since we got out quietly, day two is going to be just moving bags. So we're going to go to fast forward for that. Um, a tip for saving a little time on moving bags Move, uh, throw them all together. Don't try to like move one bag the entire length and then another bag the entire length. Throw them together in a pile. And when you go up to the pile, position yourself uh, as far forward into the pile as you can where you, while still being able to reach uh, everything that's in the back of it. Because you don't want to have to move while you're throwing them. You want to find one spot that you can sit and you can just grab a bag, turn around, throw it forward. Turn, get the bags behind you, turn around, throw them forward, and just repeat that. Um, and when you get to the last bag, instead of throwing it, you're going to have to move up to the pile anyway. Just carry the bag with you. It saves you one more pickup. It's not a huge deal, but you know you can shave seconds off. Uh, it makes it slightly less annoying to do a job like this, 
and it can actually make the difference between whether you get bags in or not on something like Shadow Raid. Like for example, if you're trying to get samurai armor out and there's somebody who is going to path in front of the vault eventually, the faster you move those bags and the more efficiently you move those bags, the more like you are, likely you are to get everything out. And then we're going to go shout down these uh, civilians, tie them down, and then keep moving bags. Like I said, if we got out of day one loud, we would be ambushed by SWAT when we got into this part of the warehouse, and things would really suck. There's an underground path you can use if you have a saw with you. Uh, I've only done that like once or twice, because I, I rarely see people leave day one loud, unless they intend on doing the whole thing loud. But yeah, you can take that underground path and it's a little safer. It's an interesting thing, but kind of overlooked. All right. On to day three. We're changing our deployables now. We're going to set trip mines as our primary and we're going to set an ECM as our secondary. The reason is we can get a body bag asset, which will cover our entire body bag needs. That plus what we have on us is five, and we can only kill four guys anyway, so we don't need more than that. So we're not bringing body bags with us at all. And then we're setting cameras. Uh, we're doing it in ways that are trying to cover large areas. Uh, it looks like those two cameras are pointing at each other, but the idea is the one in the kitchen is getting those two rooms, and then the one in the west main room is getting the stuff that's beneath. Or not not that's beneath, but uh, getting the stuff that's above and on the bottom floor up to the kitchen wall. Trying to get the cameras overlapping. Now, since we had nine paintings, we have nine hidden cameras we can use to survey the area and spot where our, where our computer parts are and where key cards are. You don't need key cards on quiet, but they can be handy to have as a way to just like make a quick little escape into a quiet area. Uh, you can you know stash body bags in there if the shape of the room is right. You can hide from guards in there. So it's nice to get a key card just in case. But yeah, anywhere you see a yellow highlight, that's where we saw you know an item or a key card. A lot easier to find all five of them, and we did um, when you have nine paintings. Now, it's really handy to clear guards when you have a, have them in a safe spot up here on the roof. Um, you don't want to shoot them near the skylights because they can be seen, but yeah, if you get them in a safe spot like this, it's nice to thin out their numbers because they are all over this place. Um, depending on who you talk to, they'll tell you two different ways to do it. Um, you have six guards, and some people will say kill three and then just run with the three out there and save one for an emergency. The other people will say kill four and that will trigger the backup guard who will check in and you just like let him kind of walk around and check everything and then eventually he leaves and then you have the whole place to yourself with just two guards. Either of those are valid. I prefer to cut it down to three because I don't like to put myself in a spot where if I run into a guard, the mission's over. I like to have that like that extra little bit of padding. And I just like play more carefully with three guards instead. But either is valid. Do what you feel is good. Uh, we're bringing the trip mines with us because they have a stealth use. I alerted this guy. They have a stealth use. If you put them in down in a stealth heist, they instead of defaulting to explosive mode, they default to detector mode. You can tell by the blue beam, and you can swap them back and forth at will. I do not recommend swapping them, because uh, you don't want the mines to explode and alert everybody. But having detector mines is nice, because if somebody walks past the beam, it'll set off a beep so that you know someone went past, and it will highlight them as if they walked in uh, under a camera that you control. So we can have three cameras plus our detector mines. Plus, if we had another person who was here looking through the hidden cameras on the paintings, we could have them flipping through it a bunch more, and we could have nine more. So you can get a lot of surveillance of this place, 
and, it, and you can make it a lot easier. Okay, another guy's coming up. We're gonna remove him once we get a safe shot. A security guard. Un guardia. Wait for him to move the. Oh, okay, another guard's coming up. We don't want to shoot them both and have to answer two pagers and move two bodies. Security guard. So we're gonna wait for one of them to move and then get the other. But yeah, once we start getting into the actual apartments and digging around, we'll start putting down the sensor mines, and that'll give us a much better idea of where the guards are, and give us the ability to react and not have to run away at like the last second. We can be a little more proactive with our positioning. We still need to find four items. Um, you're finding five pieces of tech, two hard drives, a laptop computer, a tablet PC, and a cell phone. And when you get all of those, you bring them up to the top and hook them up so that Bane can hack into the guy's network. And that will allow you to use his office PC to um, find the vault and open it up. You can open up the, like, the ante room to the vault without that. But yeah. There's, there's sort of a a disconnect between how they program this mission and how they want you to play it. Um, the idea is that opening the vault and getting the gold inside is optional, but they make you go through several of the motions of opening the vault it, uh, to be completely mandatory, and that's obnoxious. Like, getting all these tech tools to be able to open the vault if I have no interest in the gold, I shouldn't have to do this. And then at the end, once you've uh, placed all the cocaine and framed him, you should be able to leave, but they make you go to the computer one more time and use it to open the actual vault, even if you're not going to go in and get the gold. It's kind of dumb. It's one of the early like big prestige stealth heists that Overkill created so the scripting on it is kind of slapdash we're gonna put some mines on these entrances so we have an idea of people going through the stairs the stairs are our main way of getting through this apartment so we don't want to get surprised here Thank you. Uh, we're moving a bookcase since we're here in the bedroom we're gonna pop it open uh, the vault can be behind one of three different bookcases. One of them is here in the bedroom, and you can see that it's not there. We're moving the bookcase back because they'll actually notice if the bookcase is out of place, even if there's not the vault behind it. Uh, the other locations are one at the top of the stairs to the left, and one in the lounge area in front of us. The lounge is probably the hardest one to use. Um, I actually, that's where my vault was when I did it on Pro Job in Death Wish to get my skull, and that really sucked. But it can be done, like all the others. The one in the top left seems to be the one I see it on one down the most. It's kind of a middle ground. It's easier than the lounge one. It's harder than the one in the bedroom. And yeah. That's where we'll be hiding cocaine once we get all the computers hacked. We need one more item. I don't remember where it was. But since we're down here, we can probably check uh, to see if the vault is here before we head back up. Place some more trip mines, get some more recon of this place. All those little green outlines you see are trip mines that are showing us these guys' locations. Okay, so yeah, it's not here. So we know by process of elimination that it's at the top of the stairs on the left side of the building if we were facing from the stairs. I'll show you where it is as we pass by. It's up these stairs and then it'll be to the right. Yeah, behind that bookcase th to the right is where the vault will be. We're not going to open it now because we don't have anything to put in there. Okay. And 
we're going to get back up to the top to look through our cameras and see if we can spot the uh, fifth item. We've already killed uh, three guards, so we're not going to take that guy out. We want to save... We want to save a kill for an emergency, but yeah, it's good to point him out and be sure that we know where he is. Panning over the cameras here. It's not there. Not there. Not there. Not there. Oh, there it is. Okay, that little yellow highlight, the cell phone. So left side, living room upstairs. Once we get a safe route, we can go down and check it out. Security guard. And yeah, like I said, some people prefer to kill four guys, and then a guard will come as backup, and he'll walk around, and you can hear him reporting into his radio. He'll say, you know, no signs of intrusion, moving on. And he'll, he'll check in at every location on the map as he does this. And once he's hit all the spots on his patrol, he'll leave. And you'll be back to two guards. And some people prefer that, and that's fine. That's all good. It's one of those things where um, having a HUD like Wolf HUD here can give you a little bit of an edge because you don't have to, you don't have to be extra super careful in wait. Um, It'll show you on the HUD when he's left. Where if you didn't have that, you might have to spend a little more time. We've got all the devices, so we're going to set them up. But yeah, the other reason I don't like uh, going for that route is that waiting for that last guard to check in everywhere and leave takes a long time. If you can avoid that, then you can get through here quite a bit faster. Okay. With everything set up, now we have to go down to the office PC. And like I said, this is one of those triggers that like the game assumes you care about the gold, even though maybe you don't. We don't really need to like access this computer. We don't need to open the vault. We don't we don't care about any of that. We know where the vault is because we've, you know, eliminated eliminated the other locations. And we don't care about the gold, but the way that this is scripted, we have to pretend to care for a little bit. Okay, and here so he says he doesn't know where the vault is. Since we know where it is, this is when we move to the next story trigger. Open the vault, step inside, set off the trigger close it back up because we don't want anybody to see it and get alerted and then we got to go back to the top this is one of the, those things that gets easier and faster with multiple people because you can have another person up there to set off that trigger to get back up there and you can also buy a map asset when you have multiple people to um, make a chute to drop all this cocaine down and you can drop it from the roof to a spot inside the apartment and if you have two people coordinating, you can be like, okay, I'm in position, drop the next bag. You could technically do it with one person, but it's a pretty bad idea because you'd have to move from the roof to the drop point. And it's like, at that point, why not just carry the cocaine with you? That would actually be safer. We don't have to move the coke like I'm doing right here. I'm just doing it because sometimes you get a nice opportunity where there's a lot of people out of position and you have a big opening and in those situations, you want to have the coke as close as you can get it and safely store it so that you can quickly move back and forth and maybe squeeze in an extra bag during the opening rather than have to wait for another one. Because, yeah, we have to look for openings and pick our spots to throw it in, and it gets to be kind of a pain in the ass. So anything you can do to speed it up is nice. Between the three cameras and the trip mines, which we have not yet finished setting out, hopefully we can have a pretty good idea of where the guards are going to be. And not get caught by them as we do this. 
ourselves getting caught is less of a worry than them seeing the bookcase, honestly, because we can move and we can do so pretty quickly, but the bookcase is always going to be in the same place and it closes a little slow. So even if we shut it down and get out of there, they can still sort of walk by and see it as it's shutting and get alerted. So we got to be careful. Reflect on how big this place is, that we have three cameras covering large areas, and we've placed 11 of our 14 trip mines, and we still don't know where all the guards are at all times. It's a big damn place. Once we get all the cocaine planted, they'll make us do one more thing to pretend to care about the gold, and then we can escape. I actually lost during one of my first attempts at this on Death Wish because of that way back in the day. I, um, I got caught and calculated that if I drop an ECM uh, after I answered the pager, because I was out of body bags, if I dropped an ECM, I could put in the last bag and get the hell out and before anything became a problem. And unfortunately, the game decided that I didn't want to actually get out. I wanted to go and open the vault even though I didn't want any gold. And it was that, that little extra bit of time that cost me the mission. And that sucked. That soured me on this for a bit. Security guard. But once you know that you have to do it, it's not nearly as bad. Wait for these guys to move. I've made a big deal about not caring about the gold a few times here. Um, that is in large part because it's not practical to get when you're playing solo. You can get it, no matter which vault it's in, it's possible to get the gold playing solo. But it's not practical. Um, you have to get to the computer in the office, activate it to shut down the lasers, and then haul ass to the vault to get the gold and move it past before the lasers reactivate. And it's just not worth it. Security guard. I'm gonna try to get downstairs and put another uh, trip mine in the actual stairwell since that guy somehow got past while being unmarked. He must have taken such a slow walk that or somehow he squeezed around the mine coming in. So yeah, putting another one in the center of the stairwell to make sure that anybody that's using it won't catch us off guard like that guy nearly did. Since we have the locations of all of them, we know that we're safe at the moment. And at this point, you sort of get the idea, so I'm going to put the rest of this into fast forward and I will resume normal speed once we get to the next story trigger.
Okay, and we did it. Now, the last trigger, we have to activate the computer one more time to pop open the vaults. It's a little crowded around here. Gonna get away from the doors and windows a little bit and watch them move around with their highlights so I know what, what's going on. There's a guard down here. I'll just have to wait for him to scram. We can use our sixth sense to ping him without him seeing us. Okay, and he's moving away. There we go, now the vault door is open, so we could use the computer to shut down the lasers for a limited amount of time, haul ass to the vault, move some gold, and get out before the lasers restart, and repeat that, but we just did a hard mission. I'm content to take the win. You should be too.